Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on uh, diffraction. Um, so imagine like you know you have uh, waves uh, approaching some kind of a small aperture, uh, some kind of a small opening. So you have, uh, let's assume that uh, you have a tank of water and you're able to produce like a wave, wave front that looks like this, right? So successive waves look like this. You're, you're viewing it from the top. Uh, and a wavefront, and I should define this. I don't think we've used this word before, but wavefront. When when we're saying wavefront, wavefront refers to uh, line uh, joining points in phase on a wave. So, when this kind of a wave approaches an opening, it looks like this, right? Approaches, approach, uh, looks like this. They tend to spread out. Um, you know, so you, you would, this, this wave front approaches here and then it's gonna look a little bit like this as it's moving out away from the, away from the, um, uh, the aperture or the slit that is going through. Um, so if the wave front were to approach a slit that was a little bit wider, right? So the opening itself, is a bit wider, uh, then you're going to find that they actually, you know, don't uh, spread out quite to the same degree. So it might look a little bit like this, right? So they're still spreading out, becoming a little bit more circular, as it were, but only at the edges, right? So this is in the case of a small aperture, and then this is in the case of a large aperture. What about if there's an actual obstacle in the way, right? So let's say you have like a circular object in the way as it's approaching, uh, as the wave front is approaching this object, what happens? Well, what we find is actually the the, the wave actually just kind of, you know, uh, it's, it, 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 it spreads around it. That's, let, let, that's a nice way of putting it. You know, the wave might look uh, kind of like this, right? The wave front might look a little bit like this. And then eventually some distance out, it might just look exactly like what it was before. So what have we found experimentally? Experimentally, we found that the greatest diffraction occurs when the object uh, or the aperture is the same diameter as the wavelength of the waves. So found that if the object is much more than 100 times the size of the wavelength, then the diffraction is much, much less noticeable. So, you know, visible light, has a wavelength of 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 7 meters. So for diffraction to be observed, the gap needs to be up less than about 0.1 millimeters. So what I would like you to do, you know, later on tonight, um, go look at a street light, a distant street light. Um, just look outside your window, look at a distant street light, and make a narrow gap through your fingers, as, as narrow as uh, you could make that gap, right? So you will see diffraction so you might see the street light kind of looking you know uh, like that when you have um, when you have a, a, a large opening between your fingers but over the course of time you're actually gonna see some kind of a f you might still see the same thing but you might see rays coming out like this you know so that is an example of diffraction happening uh, so I'll write this last piece down as well that if uh, uh, size uh, of object or the aperture for that matter is uh, greater than 100 lambda 100 times the wavelength size then diffraction is not really noticeable or diffraction is less noticeable the beauty part of this is guys because light undergoes diffraction that is powerful evidence that life can be explained using wave properties live we'll, we'll see this later in this uh, in in the course live can light can be explained by using um, theories that define wave properties as well as theories that define properties of particles um, so this wave particle duality as it, as uh, as physicists call it uh, of light um, initially before we got into like you know the 20th century you know I'm talking about Newton's era and things like that people thought that light uh, has wave properties because they were able to observe diffraction and things like that. So that's diffraction.
There's another phenomenon here that's really interesting and it's called interference. So let's take a look at that. So imagine you have two loudspeakers a uh, little bit uh, far apart from each other, but you are standing at point A, let's say, right? And you are able to uh, listen to the sound coming from both the loudspeakers. Um, you're gonna hear a loud sound at point number A. And then conversely, so I'll, I'll call this, I'll call this one as loud right here, right? Then you're gonna hear a bit of a quiet situation at point B, as well as point B on the other side of this line. Back to loud at point C, and here as well. And then back to quiet at point D. So why do we think this is happening? Well, the answer lies in something called interference. So let's take a look at what is meant by interference. And I'm gonna come back to this loudspeaker example at the end. So imagine you have a waveform that looks like this, right? And um, you have, so that that's might be the uh, waveform that's coming from one of the loudspeakers, right? And the other loudspeaker has the exact same waveform. So what happens? What happens now, right? If you add these two guys together, literally as you're adding them together, what happens? Well, you're gonna find that the amplitude actually doubles. So the amplitude is gonna double. So basically, you know, when two waves of the same type are meeting, their displacements can add or subtract, just like vectors. At its most simple, if these two sets of waves are exactly in phase, which is the situation that you are seeing on screen right now, the combined wave is going to have an amplitude equal to the sum of the two amp uh, amplitudes. This is what we call constructive interference. They're building on top of each other. That's why it's called constructive. What about we, you know, have a different case? So let's say this is one of the waves. I'm going to draw a line here so you can see it's a different one. But the other wave maybe looks like this. The other wave looks like this, right? So these guys are in phase with each other. They are completely out of phase with each other. Right, so if we measure in terms of uh, the, the, the unit measure for phase is 180 degrees out of phase, in anti-phase essentially right here, right? Uh, these waves are gonna cancel each other out. Uh, so if you put them together, you're going to see, if you were observing this on an uh, oscilloscope, that's the kind of pattern you would see. So the amplitude has basically gone to zero. The two vectors, in a sense, have cancelled out. Um, so if, if the original amp amplitudes, in this case, the, uh, I'm trying to say that the amplitude is the same of both waves, they are... Uh, just out of phase, uh, they're in anti-phase with each other. In that kind of a situation, uh, the uh, the amplitudes will cancel out and you will get destructive interference. There's one more concept to talk about here, and that topic is coherence. Um, so if you want interference to happen between waves, whether, whether it's constructive or destructive, if you want interference to happen, two coherent sources of waves are required. Uh, waves required for interference. What do we mean by this? Well, coherence basically means that the frequency must be same. And secondly, phase difference must be constant. They don't have to be in the same phase. They don't have to be in a complete antiphase. But whatever difference of phase there is, it must be constant. You can't have a changing phase difference. It can't speed up, it can't speed down. So you can, if you have one wave that looks like this and the other one that looks a little bit, little bit like this and then you know the phase difference changes over time, that's not gonna work. You can't, you can't have interference in that case because the, uh, the sources are not coherent. So let's go back to the example of the loudspeakers, the two loudspeakers uh, question we were looking at earlier.
So to drive the point home about coherence, I'm going to say that there's a signal generator back here behind these loudspeakers and it is connected to both the loudspeakers. So the same signal is going to both loudspeakers and as a result of that you have a coherent set of waves. So why is this happening? Why do we have uh, waves interfering? Uh, wh why do we have a loud sound at point A but a quiet sound at point B? Well basically it's because at point A you're having constructive interference. You're having one bit wave building on top of another. And that same thing is happening at point C. Whereas at point B and at and point B, you have destructive interference. So the waves are canceling each other out in that situation. What is also important to point out is, you know, um, point B and point D are about one full wavelength apart from each other, right? So you can have, remember, the phase difference must be constant. You can just, you know, um, if, if one of the waves looks like this and the other wave uh, was looking like this, this guy interfering with this guy is going to lead to destructive interference. But at the same time, this guy interfering with this guy again is going to lead to destructive interference. This is why this is the case of point D as opposed to the case of point B. Point B was, point B was the yellow dots and uh, point D is the green dots. Let us also look at inter interference through the example of uh, water waves and that might also help you uh, understand this concept a little bit more. So imagine you have taken a couple of pebbles and just dropped them side by side into the water at the same time. So you might get like, you know, a pattern of waves that radiates out from where you drop the pebbles in. And uh, uh, it might look a little bit like this, like an expanding wave front, uh, you know, a circular expanding wave front. And what you're going to find is, you know, the, the point in the middle, that's where you're actually having the interference occurring as the, as the wave fronts overlap, uh, interfere, I beg your pardon. With each other so what i want to kind of show you is the dotted lines are are the are the trough of the wave whereas the solid lines are the crest of the wave so what happens if a crest and a crest meet with each other right that we're assuming for a second this is coherent you know fully in phase with each other if a trough and a trough are going to meet uh, meet uh, uh, meet at that point you would have and I'm going to denote this by this blue color here that is going to be a maximum displacement point what about a trough and a trough meeting with each other that would also be a maximum displacement point wouldn't it now right uh, so that is going to be right there so I'll, and then another crest plus crest right there so this is what I would call right here I would call this a line of maximum displacement. What about if a crest and a trough are meeting each other? So let's pick a good point for that. A crest and a trough meeting each other, and let's use uh, red for this. A uh, crest and a trough meeting each other would be right there. Another crest and a trough would be right there. Uh, another crest and a trough would be right there, as well as right there. So those points are where you're going to have the destructive interference happening. Right? So that's where you have destructive interference happening. You don't have, you basically have zero displacement, right? So you have zero displacement. That's a line of zero displacement. Whereas this one was um, our constructive interference or a line of maximum displacement. So try it out see what the shape of the water uh, looks like uh, when you when you um, drop pebbles in there you're going to see that there are points you know that are relatively higher compared to the other points um, so that is how we can look at interference of water waves uh, and think of it in crest and trough kind of ways um, to think about uh, constructive and destructive interference um, so 
let's actually uh, stop there for a moment and we'll continue with the interference of light uh, in our next video. So I'll see you in the next video.